can I change types? Is it possible for a person to change types as they get older and more mature? If I'm an introvert, how come I also have kind of like this extroverted mode? I mean, I like certainty and plans, but sometimes I go rogue. What's that about? These are some super common questions that we're going to get into in today's video. Many people um, feel sort of like boxed in when talking about personality type. And if that's you, if you feel like you're more complex than just a type, this video is for you, friend. Apart from the fact that typology deals with like likelihoods and tendencies as opposed to like absolute certainty, there are factors that can cause us to behave outside of what we would call our personality type. And here's the kicker. Our ego, or what we refer to as our personality, is only one aspect of our total psyche. It's the one we identify with. It's, it's how we present ourselves to the world. It contains our favorite cognitive functions for taking in information and making decisions. But as some of the more esoteric belief systems teach, we are more than just our egos, friends. I think this would be a good point to intro a theory called Four Sides of the Mind. This theory is credited to Dr. John Beebe, and it's the basis for which we're going to be diving into these topics in today's video. I'm going to put some graphics on the screen that will hopefully illustrate what I'm talking about. With regards to typology, there are eight total possible cognitive functions. Our ego contains our top four. Our ego contains a thinking, a feeling, a sensing, and an intuition function. We have two axes within our ego and within all sides of our mind. We have our decision-making functions, which are thinking and feeling, and we have our perception functions, and that's how we take in information. For an in-depth description of this concept, I'm gonna refer you to an old video that I did on cognitive axes. With each of the types, you're gonna have one axis that is extremely polarized, and you're gonna have another axis that's more in the middle, that's more balanced. So if our ego, let's say, has our preferential functions numbered one, two, three, four, the first side of our mind that we're gonna dive into is the subconscious. And this is kind of the closest to the surface of our ego. It's the same exact four functions of the ego flipped upside down in opposite order. Each one of these sides of our mind has what's called a cognitive transition or a cognitive gateway. And the gateway function into the subconscious mind is the inferior function or the aspirational. This is our fourth function and to explain kind of what's happening when we transition to this side of our mind, um, we're gonna go through our top three first. When we are encountered with any type of a problem throughout life, we're gonna go to our top three functions first to try to solve it. Um, but a lot of times it can't be solved, and so we get to number four. And um, this tends to be a function where a lot of our worry lies, where maybe we don't go to quite as often as the other three, but part of maturity is learning to work on the weaker parts of ourselves. And so a lot of times when we run out of options, we're forced to do this. This can happen in stress, in chaos, or when just simply trying to solve a run of the mill kind of problem. When we find ourselves in a situation or trying to solve a problem where our fourth function is the key to solving this problem, we need to turn this part of ourselves up. We need to kind of bring it up from this function that we normally kind of push to the bottom of the stack. Uh, we need to bring it to the top. So in this scenario, turning up our inferior function, it transitions that function into a hero function. And so it turns us into the personality type that flips upside down those four functions. I'm an INFJ, so I'll use the INFJ type as an example. The INFJ subconscious is an ESTP. So the order of the functions is going to be four, three, two, one. So SE hero, um, this might be something that INFJs use when they need to perform or when they need to present themselves, or kind of like when they need to like muscle their way through something, when they need some sort of physical mastery or skill. Personal example I have shared in a previous video, but I'll share again here for the sake of illustration. When I bought this house that I'm sitting in, this is my content creation studio, and I was kind of in a bind. It was 2020 and we all know what was happening then. Um, I have two kids and a spouse and everybody was home. And in order for me to be creative and do my job, I needed quiet and I needed to be able to 
have quiet and large chunks of time to create. I wasn't getting that home. And so I started looking for studio spaces and I found this place. It is a residence, but that's part of my brand. I have a food blog. And so it made sense to have somewhere with a nice kitchen where I could film and take pictures and also have some additional space for like a desk and storage for props. Anyway, I was shopping for this house and it was like the beginning of the feeding frenzy in the real estate market. Um, I thought we were at the top. We actually were not. It, it went up even more after that. Anyway, as I was looking for houses, I became like so no nonsense. I became all about the facts and like here are the comparables and like here's what I'm willing to do. I was in full on ESTP mode and I was using it consciously. I was using the SE Hero to like take in the facts of my environment and be like, well, this feature is probably worth this much if you look at the comparables and here's the truth like here's my ti parent here's what i'm willing to do and i was very no nonsense and very like very estp like very alpha and um i even walked away from the deal at one point because i was like no i'm just i'm not doing that it doesn't make sense for me because this is not my primary residence i had other options i was not like as emotionally tied to this place as i was in the past like purchasing a residence purchasing my house so i was just like very no nonsense about it yeah it ended up working out i got the deal i stuck to my guns and i was very estp like in that situation it's not my norm and for any type when you go into your subconscious um it's it's the closest one to your ego so it's a little easier than the other parts of the mind but it still can feel draining because because it's not like what you prefer it's taking a function that maybe you haven't developed as much and like bringing it to the forefront. So it does take a lot of energy to operate in subconscious mode. Eventually we're going to come back to the ego. That's kind of like our cozy little home. Again, most likely you look at your own past and maybe think of some examples. Um, take your functions and flip them upside down and see what type that is. And I bet through chaos and stress, you can see where this has maybe come out in yourself. Okay, so that leads us to the next side of the mind, which I guess is the third side. So we've done the, the ego and the subconscious. All right, so what happens if we run through all four of those functions, one through four, four through one, and we still can't solve a problem? That leads us to the shadow side of our mind, also known as the unconscious. This is a bit deeper into the psyche and it covers functions five through eight. These are gonna be in the same order as our ego functions, just the opposite orientation. So for the sake of our diagram, I'm just gonna say five, six, seven, eight. Um, five is gonna be the same, like if you have an intuition function, like I'm introverted intuition hero is number one. So my fifth function is called the nemesis spot and it's going to be extroverted intuition. Let's talk about the cognitive transition and the gateway into this function. Um, from a cognitive function standpoint. So we've exhausted one through four. All right, so that kind of next in line, it leads us to number five, which is our nemesis function. And our nemesis function, number five, is the gateway into our shadow. Again, it's gonna be the same four functions as our ego flipped in orientation. For an INFJ, this would be extroverted intuition nemesis, introverted feeling critic, extroverted thinking trickster and introverted sensing demon. For an in-depth view of the shadow side of the mind, I'm going to link this video here. The shadow functions in our unconscious is a great place to work on some additional awareness, to really work on our cognition in the areas where we're a lot weaker, where we don't prefer to be. It's a place where we get out of our comfort zone for sure. When you have an awareness of this, you can look at your shadow functions and intentionally practice them again in real life you're most likely to go into the side of your mind without conscious awareness of it um it, it, the transitions are going you try the ego if that doesn't work you go into the subconscious if that doesn't work the nemesis function is going to take us into our shadow so if we're doing this without an awareness of it it's most likely going to be kind of chaotic it's going to be uh, maybe negative, just look at like an unhealthy version of the personality type that your shadow is. But you can work on this side consciously and I'll give a personal example of that. Again, I'm an INFJ, so INFJs have an ENFP shadow. This channel is actual shadow work for me. 
How so? Well, I work on another side of the internet. Um, I don't even know if many of you guys follow me over there. I'm a food blogger and I'm very strategic with that business. It is my full-time income. It's my full-time job. Um, I'm like very regimented and very strategic about what types of recipes I post. I like SEO, keyword research, everything. I have a content calendar. It's very strategic. It's very plan heavy. Over here on this channel, I'm allowing myself just to kind of post as I feel inspired. Um, sometimes I feel that pressure start to creep in. Like I need to post once a week or like have a content calendar. And then I'm like, no, this is shadow work for me. Um, I need to be able to be whimsical and post when I'm inspired. I use my extroverted intuition a lot, which is um, very exploratory and very experimental. And like, I'm kind of like poking at things. Um, I'm experimenting, I'm talking about things. I'm kind of actually finding my voice as I go, which is very unlike usual me. Usually I know exactly where I'm going, exactly what I want to say, and I like have sort of an end game. I don't have any sort of end game for this channel. This is something that I'm doing out of pure enjoyment, pure curiosity, pure exploration for myself. So my default setting is like strategy and knowing my future and like picking out the one best path and like getting on the quickest way there and getting there as fast as possible. Um, my shadow also has come out um, in relating to people a lot lately especially online. I have a lot of online friends and um, I'll kind of like poke at them in a very playful and exploratory kind of way. Like, I wonder what they'll do if I say this <laughs> or I'll like throw a little joke at them and just see, I wonder if they see that I'm sliding this in, you know, I, I don't know. It's very playful and just kind of like, hmm, I wonder what will happen if I do this. It's very ENFP like, and it is positive because I'm practicing that intentionally. I work a lot on my introverted feeling as well. I've mentioned in past videos, I do recognize that I have introverted feeling. It's not like invisible to me. I do also recognize that I tend to be really hard on myself. Um, but I have practiced um, asking myself intentionally, how do I feel about this? What feels right to me? Not how I'm gonna make everybody else feel, but what feels right to me based on my personal values. Anybody can do this by diving into their critic function. I've even got a little TE stuff planned. I'm filming another video today after I finish this one and I'm citing some sources. Good job, TE trickster. But um, again, this can tend to come out as worrisome and this side of the mind, when we go into it unconsciously, it could look more like worrying about the future, worrying about the possibilities, criticizing our own values and like worrying that we're bad people. For more on this, I'm gonna link the INFJ shadow video that I already did. There's one other side of the mind. It's the last place we wanna go and it's called the superego. The gateway into the superego is number eight. It's what we call our demon function. And it sounds like super evil. Literally all the demon function means is that it's the last place we wanna go. Like we don't want to use this function. It literally, we go there out of sheer desperation because we are out of all other options. We've tried one through seven and the only place we have left to go is eight, our demon function. And so that gateway takes us into our super ego where number eight is becomes our hero function. And the demon function operates as number one for us. Now this would most likely come out in extreme stress, like extreme trauma, um, again, all other options have been exhausted, but you can work with this side of your mind intentionally. For the INFJ type, this side of the mind is an ISTJ. So you're gonna take your ego functions, flip them around to the opposite orientation, five, six, seven, eight, and then flip those upside down. So you're seeing the pattern here. You've got one through four in the ego. You've got four, three, two, one in the subconscious. You've got five, six, seven, eight in the unconscious, and you got eight, seven, six, five in the superego. A personal example that I've used um, as an INFJ in a job where I was at a specific company and I got really disgruntled and 
I just went into this mode at work like, well, I'm just going to do exactly what's expected of me. Nothing more. I'm going to show up, do exactly what you asked me to do. No more above and beyond. And I will be, oh, and by the way, I'll be looking for a new job now and I'm out of here the first chance I get. Like, it's almost to this point where like, we're not emotional about it anymore. We're kind of cold and fact-based and like, well, I'm just going to do what's best for me. Um, no more above and beyond. I'm just doing what I need to do to get through this and move on to something new. So in summary, when you or someone you're speaking with feels like you might be changing types, this is probably what's going on. So just as like a reflection exercise, think about your pre-March 2020 self. Because we've all been through sort of this collective trauma and this collective stress and um, it is highly likely that you've been put in the other parts of your mind. I've heard so many people say, I used to be like this huge extrovert and now I can't stand to be around people. I've heard like, I used to just fly by the seat of my pants and now I plan everything. So these types of things most likely are what's going on when you're going into the one of the other sides of your mind. I hope you gain some awareness from this video. The coolest thing is once you have conscious awareness of it, you can look at those functions, learn about them and start practicing them consciously and start practicing your shadow functions and building competency there. This is part of what it is to be a mature human being, to become uh, more enlightened, to become, I guess, like you're the best version of yourself that you can be. If you like this video or you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for being here and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.